Okay, we're back. We're back. Uh, we happen to have uh, our commercial voiceover specialist, William H. Moore of the Third. Uh, we happen to have. Uh, must be Verizon, huh? <laughs> we happen to have our commercial voiceover specialist, William H. Moore of the Third, uh, on the air now. Um, do you hear me? Okay. Yeah, now I can. Okay. Uh, where, where are you now? Where's your location now, Bill? Right now I'm in Paramus, New Jersey. Okay, very good. Um, now, um, I know you have something to say about the uh, newsletter censored. Well, as I say, you that the best way to join your organization is to go to www.newslettercensored.com and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. We're living in end times, people, so you need Newsletter Censored. So go to NewsletterCensored.com. Okay, thank you. And uh, this is the way to join our organization. The best way to join it since 1977, founded by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Now, uh, we were talking about something the other day concerning how people in authority, uh, it could be uh, uh, the owners of professional sports teams, could be politicians, people are just afraid to say the word no. Modern parents are afraid to say no to their kids. Now in this case, professional sports team owners, okay, are paying, are, are afraid to say no to the so-called superstar athletes. They're paying them obscene amounts of money caving into their agents and what that does is it drives the price of the tickets to also to obscene levels which causes the fans to suffer because of this. Well, the only way around that too is why do the fans keep paying with these going? You know? If they stop paying and stop going, you see a different story, I'm sure. Yeah, well. But they still continue to pack the stadiums. Yeah, well, you, you got to uh, That's one way of doing it. It's almost like a boycott. You know, everybody wants to talk big. Nobody wants to do anything about it. Yeah. And then if the owners, when they do get together, remember years ago, and plot behind closed doors not to pick, some, pick somebody up or do this, they were accused of collusion. You see what the price now, of a movie is, is today? Collusion illegal. Well, uh, yeah, the boy... You're deciding as a group. It's almost like voting. So what's wrong with that? You've all decided not to pick so-and-so up. Okay, why is that illegal? Because they came in then to the players' union, I'm sure. Yeah, well, they should really learn to say no because uh, a, f a family, uh, you know. Can you speak up a little more, please? Um, a family, um, you know, a mother, father, and a couple kids paying over $300 to see one Yankee game is, is, is totally unacceptable. It's, uh, it's well, highway. It's unacceptable, Jim, a few years ago when they were complaining a family of four was 100 and something dollars. Now it's over 300, they're saying the same thing, but nobody's doing anything about it. The price keeps going up and people still pay it and go, they just continue to complain about it. Yeah, I noticed that's uh, a... They, when they stop going, I'm sure that the, the, the leagues say, wait, we've got a problem here. They're probably laughing behind closed doors because these people pay it no matter what. You know? Yeah, that's the problem. Americans cannot, for some reason, they Americans... They complain, but they don't want to act on their complaints. No, Americans problem. don't boycott. I was going to say that, yeah. Americans don't boycott. No, they don't. And that's uh, God. And they don't, they don't realize the power of the boycott either. Well, you wonder. I mean, you look at those people at McDonald's that walked out of New York because they wanted the higher wages or whatever. Whatever became of that? You never heard a thing. It was one little blurb and it was one day and that was it. Yeah, because uh, the, the media... Wall Street, that was kind of a boycott. What did they accomplish all those months? Yeah, because the, the U.S. media, there, there's plenty of protesting that I see advertised outside of the U.S. media. The media is pro... Corporation. Corporation. Pro-elitist, because they're controlled by the corporations. They pay their salaries, you know? Well, yeah, but, but also, the, you know, you have, like, like they say, the one CNN always gives both sides, MSNBC, and then Fox left and then right. At least CNN gives, gives both sides. They don't yep. really cover anything up. I have to give them credit well, why they are the network. 
MSNBC, but but they 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 can only say so much. They can't rock the boat too much, because. Well, they do. Do they ever tell, did they ever mention the fact that corporations uh, uh, and the elitists, the top uh, 20 or 1% uh, of, of the United States and the world are trying to uh, turn the planet Earth into a corporate plutocracy and eventually kill, slowly kill off the poor and enslave the little guy? Did they ever mention that? No, but I'm not sure that's totally true either. Nah, it's, it's true. Corporatists. They're corporatists. They're corporatists. Well, uh, according to socialism going on in America is towards corporations, subsidies, and grants. And it's yeah, they they give welfare to the rich in the forms of subsidies, right? Grants, uh, Wall Street bailouts, but but, but heaven forbid they should help. Heaven forbid they should help somebody a lot less fortunate. Then it's a big problem. Well, also remember I said last week they bailed out the auto industry. Why would they bail out the, the Postal Service? Because the Postal Service does not need bailing out. It needs a change. Well, it needs to be changed. Congress... They bailed out the mean game. There's seven to eight billion dollars in debt right now. Congress wrote, a lo Congress wrote a law in 26 that the Post Office must have its pension plans, etc., 75 years in advance. Yeah, but you know that I'm saying it hasn't worked because the point of it all is destruction of the post office to sell it to UPS, DHL, and Federal Express. Well, yeah, but DHL left this country for the most part now, which I don't understand that. Which Whatever. Now, the, point, the point being, they don't, the conservatives do not want the post office. Okay? They well, don't want it. have got a lot of job people responsible. They do not care about the average person's livelihood. I don't know. I would if I was a, post, a general postmaster, postmaster general, whatever he's called. Yeah, we're talk not talking about the post office. Talking about the conservatives in government. They've got to do something different. They yeah. just, taking one day away a week is not going to help. Their delivery won't accomplish much. I don't believe. Now, now capitalism under, let's say, FDR, Truman. It was the way, the right way to do it is you gotta keep, you gotta keep the, 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 the leash on the big boys and, and you gotta regulate what they're doing because if you don't regulate them, they'll just do every, use every underhanded, unethical tactic. And then want there, you to bail them out. There is, and then they want, when they're in trouble, they want the taxpayers to bail them out, exactly. Well, that's why you have antitrust laws and all that. Remember IBM? They're not enforced. They got to be enforced. IBM was taking over yeah. the government. All right. now, okay. now look at Iceland. Iceland did the perfect thing. They threw the uh, the crooked bankers in prison. They totally revamped the uh, right the constitution, right? And they won't pay them back. And they won't. They won't pay the bankers back. They won't pay the bankers back. Yeah. Right? Well, why why pay? Why a is that a bad thing? No. Why pay a criminal back? Exactly. <laughs> you know. And you had Wall Street during the bailout too, and they still still gave themselves even with the bailout bailouts. They had big big huge bonuses and through parties, which I don't understand why why it's not was to that. That should not be given. The money was not for that purpose. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, yeah, you have to wonder all the money we give to other countries. That's How true. It's being distributed. I've heard, but the majority of it does not go to its intended purpose. It oh. goes into the foreign politicians' hands, pockets, and have you. Well, that's how you know, that we don't, we don't know where it goes. Yeah. That's how fundraisers are. The the fundraisers well, even have. Where they are, are, we give them the, the, the weapons. We don't know if the weapons are really being distributed to the. Yeah. <laughs> or what have you? You have no idea. We have no idea. Get. Yeah, the fun, the fundraisers are proven to be crooked too. You know, like a five cents on a dollar goes to the worthy oh, cause. Yeah, the charity groups, oh, they, they just don't give much of the dollar to the charity itself. No, no. It's, uh, there's but, people depending on that, they're just not getting it. But the executives are. 
Yeah. They're having big vacation meetings, all these play resorts and everything else. You know, why do you have to go to a big resort to have a meeting? Why can't you have it in a local hotel bank room or something? Yeah. You know? And then when they get to their, their party camp, most of the time anyway, they're not really meeting per se. It's not the depths of the business. It's not good. It's really not much to be accomplished on that aspect either. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm sad that people don't care when they're given the power and the money. They have the power to do to make some change. You know? proper way right sad. well no. as long as long as money is in involved in politics we will have corruption and uh, uh, we've always said if somebody is is more than qualified to run for office but they don't have a pot to piss in and they're and they're definitely very qualified they still should be able to get on the ballot with enough votes and and they should be able to attend debates and debate. It's the, public. it's the public's own fault. The way they're the ones voting these people in. Right. You know, exactly. They, they, they re-elect these some of these people, and they've had a record from the first term, and they still still vote for them again. And you wonder why your complaints, your complaints will vote them out. Right. You don't look, don't look at Mary and Barry out of Washington D.C. The mayor, former mayor. Right. Photo videotape using his lying. I think he was cocaine. He gets re-elected. Perfect example. It just doesn't make sense. Because people continue to vote two-party system. They want they, they 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 don't get a chance to get acquainted with the independents. They don't. Well, you do. And, and the closest you had really was the election when when he lost parole and the third party was there. Things about the big yeah. third party candidate so far. He's the only one that seemed to make sense. While the other two candidates were tearing each other apart, he was showing up by charge the whole thing. Yeah. Huh. Well, Ross Perot. Somebody that made sense, and did he, did he win? Yeah. No. People don't want somebody that makes sense. It seems like. No. Ross Perot used his own money in that campaign. A lot of it. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the point. He he was heard, and he was at the debates because because of because he had the money. Now, now, if somebody can get enough votes to get on the ballot. And and they're they don't have a pot to piss in, but they're they're definitely like more than qualified. You don't get on the ballot for votes. You get on the ballot well, from signatures. Signature. Signature. <laughs> you need so many signatures in each state. Of them, uh, I'm I'm sorry, Billy. What was that? You can't afford to. You need a lot of volunteers. That's the hardest part to get to get the signatures for you to get on the ballot. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You always do it every election. You do have other party candidates. I don't know, so I've never even heard of. They just really haven't got their word or their message out to anyone on the grand scale. Yeah, usually back in the day they used to have debates with all the independents to, to try to weed them out. You know, they don't even uh, televise that anymore. Um, well, they did, they did this year. You had the Republican and the, and the Democratic debates. No, no, I'm talking about the independents. Well, not really. No, not much anymore. No, you don't see it. You don't see it. Not like you used to. It's, it's like the yeah. People start running like they used to, maybe the public just doesn't care. I mean, the yeah. viewership isn't there. But, it's but, on, but nobody watches it. You know? Right. Now, getting... You know, uh, people to, like I said, people love to complain, but they won't do anything about it. See, that's the problem with Americans. They they love to complain, but they, they don't take action, and they don't boycott. And this is a big flaw with Americans. They don't... Demonstrating. Demonstrate, demonstration is perfectly legal. If it's peak out of a peaceful manner, they have that right Right. They, and again, look at when they have been demonstrating in a peaceful manner. Nobody really pays much attention. Listen, they what they, have they really accomplished the the the, o the Occupy movement had so many demonstrations, demonstrations, massive amounts of people. But what? Why, Jimmy? And what happened? But when it comes down, when it comes time for election in November, a yep. small a small percentage of the population gets to the polls. Well, remember too, on Occupy Wall Street, after weeks or months or whatever. Portland, Oregon, all over the country. It became old half fast. We become complacent. People walk right by them like they weren't even there on their way to work. They just say, "Hey, good morning, hi, how are you?" Walk by them by their occupied parks or whatever. You just got to be old hat. I, I heard the uh, it accomplished nothing. You know, I think a, a lot of these uh, modern day college kid hippies wanted an excuse to camp out at the park and and smoke weed. Well, you're, you're partly right. You know, in a big scale, you are. The other thing I heard that you interviewed some guys on TV, Occupy Wall Street, why are you here? 
much love to send all the free food. <laughs> cool. Got a great reason to be demonstrating. You know, you know how what prop? We well, you know what percentage uh, showed up to vote for the primaries recently. I heard it was only nine percent of the population. Sadly, the primaries never do get large turnouts. Yeah, but well, yeah, but even during the last presidential election, I mean, uh, yeah, I real, know. yeah. Well, what percentage really came came out to vote? Not that people just don't care about primaries for some reason. They don't realize how important they are. They, 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 they're quick to protest. They're quick to bitch and moan, but when it comes down to voting, getting their asses to the polls, and yeah. actually casting a vote, it should be yeah. close to 100% of the population should get out there and vote. Really it's not that hard. It doesn't take much time at all. Republicans are trying every way they can to talking five, maybe ten minutes of your time here today. Now, we, we, you are. I mean, you can all yeah. elsewhere. Now, Republicans... Republicans are trying very hard to prevent the little guy and the low-income people and people living on a fixed income blacks, from Hispanics, from voting. Women. People of color, women, blacks, Hispanics, what have you. They're 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 doing certain things, like uh, Bill was telling me. Uh, Billy Eisenman was telling me about gerrymandering. Well, this this involves ID cards. That's this ID cards. Cutting, yeah, cutting yeah. The, 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 the hours to vote down. Cut, uh, not having enough uh, machines, uh, computers to vote, etc., etc., etc. All designed. Happen, there seem to be glitches. There seem to always come up with a mistake or something seems to happen. This place, ballots, I mean, it's. Oh, well, that's another it's issue entirely. That's an issue with uh, computer it's voting. But I'm talking hard, about. They'll probably won't even get counted or get lost somewhere. I'm talking about Republican governors and legislators, which are trying every way they can to uh, 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 stop the blacks, Hispanics, women, and anybody who would dare to vote Democrat from voting. That is their agenda. Yeah. Right now. Where our political system is working well lately. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen getting less and less voter turnout. I think this past year we had fairly big, but I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, so up and down lately. It's almost like they consider why bother to forego conclusion. So and so is going to win anyway. So why should I vote? I've heard a lot of people say that during elections. Right. And that's sad too. Well, when you talk about two-party system, you are talking about the lesser of the two evils, which people should not uh, settle for the lesser of the two evils. Right. You know, and uh, we the people. Yeah, third party, you have independent, you have the independent. You want to consider that they're not heard. Or but they're not heard. Oh, well, that's it. So what can you do? The system you, does you not allow them to be heard. You're not heard. I mean, so what's the answer? Change the system. You know? Simple. How do you do Bingo. You know, it's easy to say, but how do you do it? You do it by not allowing the ALEC to write your laws and walk into the Congress and the Senator's offices and hand over some bucks and say, here, I want this law implemented. Well, how do you think it's been done? People try to get shot down or escorted out. That's what I'm saying. It's a lot. And you don't you do it by uh, having the Supreme Court uh, okay Citizens United. That's for damn sure. Well, who knows? Maybe down the road something will change. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Time will tell. That's true, that's true, and uh... Oh, you do. Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can say, write your congressman, call your congressman, call your representative, your delegates, what have you, but how many really do? They don't respond. <laughs> oh, so, there you go. So, so what do you do? I told you, change you're, the system. You're head against the wall, you do this, they don't respond. Do change know? the system. You have well, to you change, change the system. system. Nobody's responding. Oh, yeah. You you're getting a hard a brick wall everywhere you turn, how do you change the system? Well, that's because you're trying to work through the system. You know, no, you have to change the system yeah, working, from without. Working through the system is not going to help. That's correct. Now, now Bill, uh, 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 um, Bill Morrow, uh, Doctor Bill read it. Uh, no, who? No, I read it. <laughs> An article that you would be very surprised to hear personally, and it had to do with uh, the fact that. McDonald's pay, uh, pays its employees by giving them a J.P. Morgan Chase McDonald's debit cards 
and every time they they try to extract money like their salary using this JP Morgan Chase card they're paying a fee for everything they do I never knew that and they're I making money they and and they're making money off of those poor souls that are underpaid anyway and uh, actually well, you sure about that yeah, I was. I, I read it the other night, and and let me tell you what what, what the card's about. They're very the short. Card they were, they were handing out paychecks. Yeah. Now listen to this. You know, it was, you know, it's odd. Yeah, so McDo I, McDonald's pays employees with the J.P. Morgan Chase debit card, and there is um with the card. There's a dollar fifty ATM charge. There's a five dollar charge for cash withdrawals. There's a one dollar charge for balance inquiry. All right. And so there's seventy five. So, when I go to see them, I'm going to ask a few of them if that's true. Are they paid that way? If they are, that's your deal. Allow. Help me, Spock. Help me, Kirk. Help me, Spock. And there's a 75, it, there's a 75 cents for online bill payment. So in other words, these people are, are paid crap anyway. That's so right. instead of giving them a paycheck, right. they give them the card, and then they go and withdraw their own their own salary, which is... So you, you can cut their hourly wage actually a lot lower than they're already in. Yeah, so it cuts. So by them paying all these fees that McDonald's and J.P. Morgan are making off these poor souls, it compounds it on top of the minimum wage that they're probably getting. Yeah, that's just not fair. Don't yeah. forget, Walmart teaches their people how to apply for government assistance because their damn wages are too low. Walmart. Yeah. Walmart. Walmart's wages. I am going to run for today. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Bill, Billy. I want to thank you for your one. To both of you, and I will talk to you a little later on. I want to thank you for your wonderful input, and I will talk to you later. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Oh man, I I, I need a I need a um, oh, I, I need a uh, an, I need to take an Cold leave. Compress. I need a cold compress on my head. Uh, I know the guy for, for 800 years. Almost 40 years. I love him, but he doesn't let let us finish. <laughs> he cuts well, up, he cuts me off. Yeah, he cuts up You know, he's got um, <clears throat> the uh, the uh, well the hearing Hearing aid problem? No, no, he no. doesn't have a problem. He's got the eyes of an eagle, and he's got the hearing of, of, uh, of the million dollar man. Not Ted DiBiase, the, uh, yeah. the bionic man, bionic I'm sorry, man, the yeah. bionic man. We can make him better. We can make him better. <laughs> but when, you, when you're communicating with a cell phone, and it's somebody hell. puts you on speakerphone, it's hell. and you have a cell phone, he has trouble hearing us, but we can hear him fine. Yeah. And so does the, yeah. the, 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 the camera pick him up fine. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, sometimes if, like what I was reading, the thing about McDonald's, I wanted to get through all the charges. So what's really happening, happening is these poor people are underpaid and they're paying out fees, which takes, which lowers their salary. Unfortunately, even more. A lot of people do not understand that these are deliberate policies and tactics. They don't just happen. They're not part of of, of capitalism. So why? Are there was a deliberate change in things some thirty years ago. So why? That all benefits so, of government, so, etc., so, would be given to the elites. So why on earth would companies? want people to actually make less than minimum by instilling because these fees. companies are involved only in the short term, three months, every quarter. They're not interested in the long run so or they, how they will be, you know, so, their, their stock price so they a year from now. So they want to maximize profits per quarter and, and if a company advertises that we care about customer service they, they they probably hold us, they probably have contempt for us just like they do their employees. I'll tell you this right off the top Excuse of me. my head. Any company who, in, who in, indulges in voicemail yeah. does not want to talk to you, the customer. 
for this, press one and the pound. For English, English, English you press, press one. one. For Espanol, you press two. So they, what they do is they narrow it down to the exact department you're supposed to talk to. And then there's no a live representative. And then sometimes their voicemail kicks in after you're listening to this elevator music. I know Social Security Administration. I don't know if they still do. They used to have this sad, depressing saxophone music, like 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 a extremely depressing, hard luck kind of music that they have to listen to. And then once in a while, the voice comes on and says, uh, "Your call is important. Your call is important to us. It is. It will be taken uh, in in the order it was received. You will be answered in the order it was received." Did they give you a time? So I'm going to give you time. an estimated yeah. waiting time. No, no, they only they do that once in a while. <laughs> the estimated waiting time. You are, you have exactly five minutes left. On oh, no, then two minutes. That's left. not bad. And or, then you're on the phone for 25 minutes. Oh, another thing I noticed, we've been getting a lot of survey people calling. And when the survey person says, I'll just, I just want five minutes of your time. Mm. Don't believe it. It ends up being a half hour. And then when when I ask them, I don't I don't take surveys anymore. When I ask them at the end, uh, what do I get for this? Do I get at least a coupon or ten bucks for to go out to eat or something? They go, no, you get nothing. Thank you. You know what? That's well, don't the, you see the Snapple commercial? That's the last time I do surveys. Don't you see the Snapple commercial? Uh, what, you pick the lid up and you win nothing, and they're all excited about it. I want nothing. Nothing. I mean, at least mail me some coupons for uh, for TG uh, to for Friday's restaurant or or uh, you know or the, or the Olive Garden or something. Mail me some coupons, something I can use for my time. I mean, you 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 keep me on the phone for 20 minutes, half hour, and it's supposed to be a five-minute survey. You know, it's like make it worth my while a little bit. Unbelievable. The only time I took a survey lately is when it was political involving my opinions of Chris Christie and the and the uh, re-election campaign in New Jersey. I, I would do that for free. <laughs> and I did. And I, I, I gave him my real honest opinion. <laughs> did they like that? Actually, the, the, the girl who took the survey a uh, lovely, and she sounded attractive, you know, from Florida. She had a nice voice, and she uh, she was also progressive, like we are. So she understood my opinions. She, she what the hell is she worked 